Okay, so today we're going to set up Google Analytics in consent mode uh, using Next.js 13. So consent mode is where it's going to have the cookie banner and ask users, do they want to accept or deny those? And if you deny those, Google Analytics will still work, but it won't set up cookies. And if they accept it, then we get more information with Google Analytics. So the requirements for this, I'm expecting you've already got a application you want to install um, Google Analytics in. But if you don't run the NPX create next app, um, and I'm using the dash ts command so that we can set it up as TypeScript. Um, if you're following along with a new application, then when prompted, uh, you say yes to ESLint, no to the source directory, and yes to the experimental app directory. So that's what I mean by Next.js 13 is that new app directory we'll be using. And there's two packages we'll need. Uh, one, the client only package, which allows us to run the Google Analytics code on the client side. And then the second one, if you're using TypeScript, you'll need the types G tag package as well. Um, in this example, I'm using Tailwind CSS for my banner. Um, so if you want to follow one exactly, then try to install Tailwind CSS. But um, you can follow this tutorial without it as well. So the first thing we need to do is set up Google Analytics. So to do that, we are going to follow along with this blog post here, um, which will be linked in the description as well. So we've installed our packages. Um, for Google Analytics, you will need the measurement ID. Um, and as long as you've got that, then you'll be able to follow along with this. So the first thing we're going to do is create our Google Analytics component, which is going to hold all of the Google Analytics scripts for each page. OK, so I've got my project here. So let's create a components folder. And inside this, we're going to create our Google Analytics file. Now, going back to the blog post, all of this uh, will be linked in the description. We're going to copy this, and I'll explain what this is actually going to do. So we're importing a script. And we're using two script tags, which is recommended um, by Google. The first one is the Google Tag Manager script. And here we pass in our measurement ID for Google Analytics. And then the second one is slightly adapted uh, from recommendation, um, but it's how you set up Google Analytics. The only thing we've done is we've added these uh, three lines here, which set the consent state of GTAG um, for Analytics denied. So this is where we want to, by default, deny cookies for everyone. And it's only if they accept them from our cookie banner that we set this to true. With our Google Analytics component created, we now need to add it to our page. The best place to do this in new Next.js 13 is put it in the root layout. So this will apply it to every page. So the first thing we need to do is import it at the top of the page. And then we're just going to put it above the body here, making sure to pass in our GA measurement ID um, from Google Analytics um, as a property. So now if we go to our application and click Inspect, and go to the Network tab. If we refresh this page now, we should see that it is now working. So we can see here, one of these requests is collect. And this is sending a request to Google Analytics, which means our Google Analytics integration is now working. OK, now that we've got our Google Analytics set up and we've seen it's working through the Network tab, we now need to make it work for a SPA, a single page application, which Next.js is. So by default, Next.js will fetch all the pages at once um, so when you navigate between pages as a user, you're not actually requesting any new pages. Now, Google Analytics doesn't notice this, so it doesn't know that you're changing pages. So without what we're about to do next, Google Analytics won't report any changes of pages for a user. So the first thing we need to do is create a file called GTAG Helper. And in here, we're going to have one method uh, called PageView. So this allows us to report a page view to Google. So now we need to call it from our Google Analytics component. So we're going to add some imports and then set up a use effect here. So we're using the path name and the search params hooks, which allows us to get the URL or the current URL of any user. We then set up a use effect, which listens to changes in the path name, the search params, or the GA measurement ID, and simply gets the current URL by combining the path name and the search params, and then reports a new page view using our measurement ID to that URL. So this means on any page that we have our Google Analytics component, as soon as the page changes, that will be reported now to Google. So, so far, we have Google Analytics set up and it is reporting page views to Google. However, we now need to set up a cookie banner so that users can opt in or opt out of the additional cookies that Google uses. To set up our cookie banner, we need to paste in this code, which can be found on the blog post here. And this will set up our cookie banner component. Currently, it doesn't have any logic in it. It just has the view and creates something that looks like this with two buttons um, and somewhere that you can link to your cookie policy as well. 
we use use client at the top to make sure that this is rendered on the client side rather than trying to render this on the server beforehand. We then need to add this to our pages. So to do that, we go to our root layout again and we make sure to import the component. And then we're going to put the component at the very bottom below all the children. The reason this works is because the cookie banner is fixed, which means it's going to be um, placed in the right place on every single page. Now, if we go to application and refresh, we can see that we now have our cookie banner at the bottom of the page. Now we need to add some of that interactivity to make sure that the decline and the allow buttons actually do something because currently they don't do anything. So the first thing we need to do is set up the storage helper file. So this is going to have our methods in to get information in and out of local storage. So local storage is where we're going to store whether the user has accepted or denied cookies. This allows us to only show that cookie banner if someone's visiting the site for the first time. We don't want to show that cookie banner every single time someone visits our site as it can get quite frustrating for a user. So we have two methods here, get local storage, which we just pass it a string and a value, and that means we can store anything in local storage. And then once again, a string and a value to get things out of local storage. We then go to our cookie banner, and we're going to need to import those methods as well as use state. And here we're going to create a new state called cookie consent. So this defaults to false, but this is going to be whether the user has accepted or denied cookies. We then set up a use effect hook which is going to grab the stored cookie consent, yes or no, true or false from local storage. So this um, uses the get local storage on the key of cookie underscore consent and checks whether that has already been saved. If it's been saved, then it will return either true or false and then we can use that value. But if not, it will default to null, which means null means they haven't accepted and they haven't denied, so we need to show the cookie banner. We then set up our final use effect hook. So this is going to be run on that cookie consent changes. So that could be either when a user um, loads the page and it's got the cookie consent from uh, local storage, or this can be when a user clicks accept or deny. So what we're going to do is convert this boolean of cookie consent, either true or false, into a string of either granted or denied. So if cookie consent is true, then we'll set it to granted, else it'll be denied. So then we then need to let Google Analytics know. So we do windows.gtag and set the consent to, of analytics storage to this new value, so either granted or denied. We then set the local storage um, to this new value, which means we're storing it in memory. If they accept it, if they deny it, we then put that into memory. And then finally, for testing, we have a console.log so that we can see this happening. Finally, on our buttons, we then set an on-click event. So when the decline button is clicked, we set cookie consent to false and when it's allowed, we set it to true. So now that our cookie banner is updated to use consent mode, now if I reload the application, go to the network tab and go to this collect message again, we can see or we can look for the GCS tag, which here is set to G1-0. So zero means that we've denied the analytic storage, which means it won't store any cookies. If we click allow, we can see the new request comes through and this is now G1-1. So that one means that we've now accepted cookies. One thing we didn't see was that cookie banner hiding once we've accepted or denied cookies. So to do that, we need to go to our cookie banner component and get rid of flex and replace it with this. So if cookie banner does not equal null, null meaning no one's actually accepted or denied cookies, then it will be hidden. Else by default, it's gonna be flex like we had. So now if we go to our page, we can see it's hidden now because we've accepted cookies. If we go to the incognito tab and go to that page again, we can see that it loads up. And as soon as we click accept or deny, it disappears, which is perfect. So that's it. We now have Google Analytics set up on Next.js 13, where it's asking for consent and only using cookies if the user consents to it. And there are many areas that we can improve this further. For example, we can allow a user to change their consent, even if the cookie banner is hidden maybe putting a button in the footer or something like that. And another thing we could do is re-ask for consent every six months. So if the user hasn't accepted or denied within the last six months, it will re-show the cookie banner again. Um, let me know in the comments below if you want any of these features and I can get the blog updated to reflect that. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.